Hello, Jonathan. Yeah, hey, Ed, how are you? Hi, doing good. Uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, speak with us for Brooklyn Free Speech. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for talking to me. Uh, definitely. Um, like I said, we're really happy to have you and uh, everything you've accomplished as a journalist and an author. And, you know, I was looking you up, and it said that you were actually born in Brooklyn. So uh, I, I don't know if you want to touch on a little bit of that, If uh, just how was your experience growing up in Brooklyn? Well, I don't remember it too well. I was I was there till I was three, and then we moved to uh, up to Spring Valley, uh, that area in Rockland County. So um, my parents were the were the real Brooklynites. I was just uh, just there for a little bit. Well, it still counts. We're going to count it just for the record. <laughs> Thank right. you. You're still a Brooklynite fully. <laughs> I'm proud of it. Definitely, and we're proud of you. And uh, I have to ask because, um, like I said, you are a journalist and you are an author. Who is your uh, biggest career inspiration? Oh, man. You know, growing up, I used to read the sports pages a lot and um, and loved Red Smith. That was really my introduction to, to the newspaper because uh, I wasn't going to read any section except the sports section. And, and he was just such a great writer. And the way he was able to uh, just um, make, you, make you smile, make you feel with his words, uh, that m- had a big impression on me early on, I think. He was, you know, the columnist for the, for the New York Times back when I was growing up. Okay, so I, I should say that sports are your main uh, objective in regards to like your your um, number one interest um, as a journalist as well. And uh, if you don't mind, just giving uh, everybody like a just a, a little sample of some of the places you worked with um, in the past. Yeah, sure. You know, I was I, I actually was was never a sports writer. I love sports, but I worked as a newspaper reporter for a long time. I was at the Wall Street Journal. Uh, before that, I was at the Dallas Morning News and the New Orleans Times Picayune. Um, when I was in high school, I worked for the uh, the, the local paper. So I was, a, I was a news reporter mostly, but I loved sports. And then um, I wrote my first book was a biography of Lou Gehrig, another uh, New York kid. And mm-hmm. um, and, I, and I realized that uh, sports books are a lot of fun to write. So I. Um, have been, you know, I haven't done all sports books. I also did a book about Al Capone, uh, who's from Brooklyn, and mm-hmm. um, I did a book about the invention of the birth control pill. So, um, but then I did, you know, Lou Gehrig, Jackie Robinson, and and now I'm Muhammad Ali. It's all full circle, and uh, just in regards to obviously your uh, new book that is going to be coming out very soon, actually on uh, October third, uh, Ali: A Life. What was your motivation to write a biography? On the like on the uh, life of Muhammad Ali. Well, you know, um, I was a huge fan growing up. I had his poster on my ceiling, and you know, I was born in '64, so I'm old enough to have seen or at least watched on TV some of those fights with Frazier and Foreman and Ken Norton. And I was, um, I just thought the guy was like a superhero. And when you get older, you begin to realize that superheroes, there's no such thing. You know, he's a real person, and nobody had written a, a full biography of him yet. There've been a lot of books written about him and some really good ones, but nobody had done the full-blown, um, you know, cradle-to-grave biography where you you know, interview everybody. You know, I interviewed more than 200 people. I dug up uh, FBI records. I dug up his birth certificate, and I just went, you know, after every every little thing that I possibly could. And um, it was just unbelievable to me that this, such a great story was was out there, and and nobody had done it yet. Wow, and um, obviously during all your research, did you encounter like any issues uh, while gathering like different interviews and uh, background information on Ali? Oh yeah, it wasn't always easy. A lot of people didn't want to talk; um, they wanted to be paid to talk. Um, but you know, I eventually got everybody I wanted. I got you know all three of Ali's wives to cooperate. I got Don King. I got George Foreman. I got Louis Farrakhan. Everybody I wanted eventually came around and 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 spoke to me. So I was. You know, I, I worked on this thing for more than four years, and I was really persistent. And, and and ultimately, I think people really wanted to make sure that Ali's story was told right, and they they you know they put their trust in me. I definitely understand that. And uh, were there any surprises that you learned from the interviews and the uh, research? Oh my God, so many! I mean, you can start like just earliest chronologically, you know, Ali's grandfather was a convicted murderer. Nobody knew that. Mm. Um, he killed a guy over a, over a 25 cent craps game. Um, nobody had oh. ever discovered that. And then all kinds of things like, you know, um, related to his fight career. Um, you know, Ali failed his drug test after the, after the Larry Holmes fight. 
Um, most people don't know that. Um, he was starting to show signs of brain damage as early as the uh, early 1970s. He fought for 10 more years. So there was just one thing after another. Um, you know, I think people reading this book are going to find hundreds of things that they, that they didn't know about Ali. Do you believe uh, your book will help educate current and future boxers uh, just not only from what Ali, what Ali went through, uh, just like you said, CTE and uh, the whole process, everything, you think this will be a, help, a helpful educational tool for them? Yeah, I, I hope that it will, it will tell people that, you know, that, that, that boxing is inherently dangerous, but I think we already know that. Um, I also think it will help remind people that um, when you hear people like Colin Kaepernick being criticized for speaking his mind or even LeBron James being criticized for, for using his position to, to talk about politics, that you know, Ali came first, and Ali said that you know, I don't have to do what you tell me to do. I don't have to be what you want me to be. And we still treat our athletes, especially our black athletes, as if they're just paid entertainers and they're, they're not supposed to have any p opinions. We expect them just to perform and keep their mouths shut, and that's, that's, that's not right. And Ali fought for that right to speak up. I definitely hear you on that. And uh, in regards to the, uh, the whole CTE caution, um, what, do you, what do you believe, uh, just obviously not just from the book, but um, what do you believe people are, are learning from CTE? Because you see, it seems like even with the Aaron Hernandez situation, it's becoming even more uh, news lately. Do you feel like people are going to start taking more caution when it comes to that? Yeah, I think um, you know it, 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 it's becoming clear now that if you play football, there's a very good chance you're going to have CTE. Um, you know, Aaron Hernandez was a young man, and they found that he had advanced CTE. So, I mean, he must have had it um, in the first years of his career, and it doesn't go away. If you get it, you know, it's it's gonna it's it's gonna get you. Um, so, I think we're becoming more and more aware of that, and it'll be interesting to see how it affects the game of football. How many people are going to let their kids play? Um, if they know that it's going to do that kind of damage. Oh, definitely. And uh, you said mentioned earlier you had you've done a book with Lou, you did with Lou Gehrig. Uh, you've done Jackie Robinson. What sets this project apart from the past books you've written? Well, first of all, Ali was perhaps the most famous man of the 20th century, and this is you know he I think um, had a much um, larger profile than anyone else. And the other big difference for me was that he was, you know, fairly um, contemporary. He was still alive when I began this book, and his three of his four wives were still alive, um, many of his contemporaries. So I was able to go out and interview, you know, dozens and dozens of people who knew him and could tell me firsthand what it was like to be around him. And, and that makes for a very different kind of reporting than if you're, you know, if you're writing about Lou Gehrig and there's hardly anybody left who knew him. So I was able to get really intimate, very personal details about his life. I definitely hear you on that. And uh, you're actually in the uh, process of working on a documentary series. That's right. I'm uh, teaming up. I'm well consulting. I'm uh, you know helping Ken Burns and the team at PBS do a um, a multi-part documentary on Ali's life. Wow, it's incredible. And obviously, the book is the uh, first thing coming out October third. Can you let people know the uh, best way to uh, pick up a copy? Yeah, the book is called Ali, so that's easy to remember. And it's got a great big picture of Ali on the cover. No words. You don't even need a title when, when it's Ali. Um, mm -hmm. And it's available at all the bookstores, and it's available online at um, you know, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Um, all the, you know, every place that you, can, that you can possibly buy a book, so they should have copies of this. Okay, Jonathan, thank you very much for uh, taking time to uh, talk about your book, and uh, we look forward to reading it. Thank you. It's really nice talking to you. Okay, have a good one. Okay, bye-bye.